What up, Laker fans? DMAC here. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. Could the Lakers find a way to get Kyrie Irving? Do you want to see Kyrie in purple and gold? We're going to dive into that in just a second, but quick reminder for all the Lakers news, rumors, high videos, interviews, and more all season long, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and if you want to see us post even more Lakers content, smash that like button. Really helps out the channel. And as always, I want your takes down below in the comment section. Today's Lakers 24A question of the day do you want to see Kyrie Irving on the Lakers should the Lakers try to make a move for Kyrie let me know down below and for all latest Lakers news head over to alllakers.com what up Laker fans d here we're back with another episode of the Lakers 24a podcast and today of course we're talking Kyrie Irving and today I'm joined as always by my man Mr. Eric Yulo. Yulo what are your thoughts on Kyrie Irving and the possibility of the Lakers getting him to LA. I mean, I think it's a, a, a la la land rumor, but that's what we're here for, man. We're here for all that, all that juicy rumor milled hype. I mean, I like the idea of Kyrie Irving, the basketball player on this Lakers team. I think we know what he and LeBron are together. They're a, a title winning, a title contending team. Um, obviously he's had some health issues, but Kyrie Irving, the basketball player, all NBA guy, multi-time all-star one of the best scoring guards we've seen in the last 20 25 years the question is do you want all that baggage that comes with Kyrie Irving yeah pretty much more baggage than LAX right I mean when you talk about the vaccines he's a flat earther and uh, basically the drama with LeBron and him basically wanting to distance himself from LeBron after that championship and win a championship of his own. And I think the other big question, too, is how real are these rumors from the Nets' point of view? I mean, the Nets are reportedly unwilling to offer Kyrie Irving a long-term extension, and you know that that was really a part of the deal. It was about Kevin Durant linking up with Kyrie Irving. They formed a bond in the Olympics back in London, and uh, that's kind of the name of the game in the NBA. You link up with superstars, and per the NY Daily News, the Nets' championship hopes hinge on an amicable solution with Irving, whose personal decision not to get vaccinated and unpredictable injury history have left the Nets hesitant. And now, according to a source familiar with the Nets, thought process outright unwilling to give him a long-term extension. So the next question I want to ask you is, do you believe that rumor? Do you think the Nets right now have just made the decision to not offer him a long-term extension? I, I believe, I mean, I believe the sourcing. I believe the rumor on it. I mean, there's also, it's not black and white, right? But he has a player option for 36.5 this coming year. He's probably going to opt out of it. That's not to say the Nets can't sign him to a two-year deal with a third-year player option. It's not to say they can't sign to a, the LeBron contract of one plus one. There's something in between a max extension and trading him via sign and trade. So I think there is a world where that happens. And Kevin Durant said, you, the, another report said that Kevin Durant would, wouldn't want to be on Brooklyn uh, if Kyrie wasn't there. So look, they've hitched, they've, they have built this team on Kyrie and Kevin Durant. And I think that if I was GM Sean Marks of the Nets, I would move heaven and earth, a flat earth, to make sure that Kyrie and KD are on Brooklyn, at least for a couple more years to see what you can get. I mean, we saw how, how good this team can be last year in the playoffs. And look, this year was just a bizarre year. And to your point, dude, Kyrie hasn't played a full season since 2018, 2019. I mean, the guy, whether it's injuries or his political agenda whatever it may be he just hasn't always been available for a team so in that case i guess he'd fit right in with the lakers as a superstar who's not always available yeah, I mean, you mentioned his knees, and I think that a lot of those, a lot of that knee pain came from carrying the Cavs there in Game Seven, right? He was yeah. carrying the Cavs on his back. He made that big shot, and I think the thing with Kyrie is, like you mentioned, he does have a little bit of leverage. Actually, a lot of leverage because he has that player option. He can opt out of that deal. So look, at the Nets, they don't want to extend him. He can just opt out, and it's simple as that. And we know that yes, there's not a lot of teams with cap space around the league, but there will be a market for him. Teams will try to sign Kyrie Irving, and you're all also left in a position if you're the Lakers where you have to find a third team to take on Russell Westbrook's contract. So it always comes back to Russell Westbrook's deal. Yes, there is some value in that it's $47 million coming off the books, but who's going to be out there? Would it be the New York Knicks? Would the Knicks be willing to take on that deal? And 
maybe you send Evan Fournier and Julius Randle to the Nets. Well, in that situation, why wouldn't you just try to trade for Kyrie Irving yourself if you're the Knicks, right? So, I mean, I think that it's such a difficult proposal from the Lakers standpoint and from the sense that they still have that albatross of a contract in Russell Westbrook. And also, my next question to you is this. Do you truly believe that Kyrie Irving would want to play with LeBron James? Because to me, he's a guy that clearly wanted to leave. It didn't work out for him in Boston. It hasn't worked out in Brooklyn and to me it just reminds me of the scene from the Avengers you could not live when when Thanos says you could not live with your own failure where did that bring you back to me you could not live with your own failure where did that bring you back to me do you really think that he wants to see LeBron as Thanos in that situation just come crawling back to LBJ? I just don't think with how headstrong he is and his strong personality that he would really just be able to swallow his pride and do that. But what are your thoughts? I mean, I think if Kyrie had the Infinity Time Stone, he would go back in time and probably never leave the Cavaliers, never push his way out. Look, he said recently in the last last couple of weeks that, you know, he regrets how he handled it and, you know, hinting at being open to playing with LeBron again. I, I, I think they could they could they can kiss and make up. I mean, it's this is the NBA. I think if LeBron LeBron is pretty objective at times. And if he thinks Kyrie Irving gives them the best chance to win a championship in L.A., then I can see LeBron petitioning the front office for that, whether or not they listen is another story and it's but I, I gotta stop I gotta rewind here for a second so you don't think a Westbrook uh, Westbrook to the Nets for Kyrie you don't think a Westbrook Durant uh, reunions in the in the cards there you want to you want to bring balance to the force and just kind of <laughs> run things back from that standpoint it would be so interesting it'd be fascinating if that would happen I do think that Brooklyn or that market in New York in general is a potential landing spot for Russell Westbrook as far as him signing off on that and really being open to that not like it's his choice at the end of the day but I do think that if you're a team that would want to trade for Russell Westbrook you would want him to be buying into that situation I think that he would embrace that and who knows I mean it would make for a great storyline I mean having KD and Russell Westbrook united after all these years in the Eastern Conference but look I think that to me, it's what does it say about Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant's relationship? And what does this say about their uh, what KD will do with the Nets moving forward? I mean, what does KD say to the Nets saying, hey, man, I signed with you guys with the understanding that you're going to bring my boy Kyrie Irving. And now you're telling me you're not going to offer him an extension. I'm going to force my way out of the Nets, too. So I think KD does come into play in all this drama and with how much he wants to support Kyrie Irving if he wants to go there and vouch for his boy and say, hey, no, if you don't sign Kyrie, you got to do something with me. And I think the Nets, they're not really, we don't really know their personality right now as an organization. They're not as strong minded. They're an organization that really caters to their players. So that the same token, though, I mean, living in New York City, everyone uh, had a lot of issues with the vaccination issue. And like I said, I mean, that's just a lot of money to commit to a player that's dealt with those knee injuries. And to me, that's my other big concern. I think next year, Kyrie Irving, especially when you consider all the time that he missed this year, that could help him with the Lakers, considering those going to have a little more tread on those tires. But you would have to give him an extension and he could opt into the last year of that deal, get trade to the Lakers and then sign an extension on top of that. So that would one, it would help the Lakers. They could go over that tax, uh, you know, that tax restriction. But I don't know. Would you be OK with them signing Kyrie? Kyrie long term? Oh, no. That, that gives me a lot of pause. Like, I would actually want Kyrie on like the one plus one deal. Like, I'd rather, I'd rather have a flight risk than Kyrie than try to fly my plane for years with Kyrie. <laughs> like, yeah. that just that just makes me really nervous because he's so unpredictable, right? I mean, that's like you like we've talked about it a little bit here, but like that's at the heart of the matter. The concern of acquiring Kyrie is just he's just so unpredictable. I mean, he could just he left he left for like almost two weeks a couple of years ago, just left the team. And he had his reasons, and those are his reasons, and he's allowed to do that. He's an NBA player, he's an adult, he can do whatever he wants. But like that, that is not gonna go over well for this Lakers team. And you just don't know what the future holds. He's gonna be on the wrong side of 30 here pretty soon. You have the injury history, and on top of all of that, you have you know the mental makeup which at times has been a challenge for a lot of teams to handle so like do you want to sign up for that i mean i think kyrie from a drama perspective in la is perfect and i can already see the espn lakers nets kyrie's return to brooklyn like i can already see that ad promo we could probably write it right now on the spot and have you do a wonderful voiceover like you do so i could see the nba loving that and packaging that up and just shoving it down our goals 
Oh, it would be fantastic. It'd be fantastic for ratings. And I think the NBA could use a kick in the pants. They could use a boost right now because these pose this these playoffs have been to me. I mean, I've, I've watched the NBA playoffs since I was three. So the least compelling NBA playoffs that I can remember, not just the NBA of any sport. So we talked about the reasons for that. But getting back to Kyrie Irving and his willingness to come to L.A. And he saw how the fans treated Russell Westbrook last year. And we know he's a very mercurial player. If things go wrong with him, things can just change. This guy won't show up. And I think that you really can't risk that for the Lakers. Also, he is a liability on the defensive end. That's yeah. another thing to consider. I mean, you thought Russell Westbrook was a turnstile on defense last year. Wait till you see Kyrie Irving because he's pretty much just as bad. But I think the difference with Kyrie is he can still make shots and he's still such a great finisher at the rim. And to me, Look, even if he's bad, even if there is some drama, I know he can give you an efficient 20 to 25 points on any given night. And with Russell Westbrook, the efficiency and the turnovers were really the big issue. So to me, the big question now is, I know it's more complicated, of course, to try to acquire Zach Levine. It's also going to be, I think, when you look at the robust market that Kyrie would have, I mean, we haven't even talked about, look, the Washington Wizards are a team out there that could try to make a move for him. There's going to be a lot of teams out there that would be interested in acquiring him. But if you had to pick between one of the two, who would you rather the Lakers have at the end of the day, Zach Levine or Kyrie Irving? I'm probably going to regret this, but I, I would I would pick Kyrie in the short term, um, skip signing Levine long term. I think Levine's more consistent. Uh, I think their injury histories are kind of a wash. Um, we talked about Kyrie as a flight risk, but Kyrie just has a higher ceiling. I think, you know, we argue about this all the time, you and I at the office, but I think Kyrie is a top 10 player when he's healthy and when he's right. Uh, whereas Levine, I don't ever see us having a conversation if Levine is a first team all NBA guy. Like I just don't, I just don't see us having that conversation in the future. Levine's really talented. I love the scoring. I love the athleticism. I love what he did in Chicago. I love how he handled DeMar DeRozan kind of taking the torch there and leading that team. But I would rather have Kyrie short term than Levine long term. I would tend to agree with you, but I would say that just, just having this conversation and how quickly things can go bad with Kyrie Irving, yeah. you could see another circus next year. And I think if they were to get Zach Levine, he would be on board with whatever this organization wanted from him. He would make that deal knowing that he, along with Anthony Davis, they were going to be the future of the franchise. He's a face of the franchise type player. And I think that he would... He would work well under LeBron James better than I think Kyrie Irving if he came in there and said, hey, I'll make that deal, but it's not going to be like it was in Cleveland, okay? I want to be more your equal than your sidekick. I want to be like dual Batmans instead of Batman and Robin, but I agree with you from the sense that when Kyrie's on, I mean, you said top 10. I think that when he's on, I mean, he's like top five. I mean, honestly, like his ability to score on any given night, it's really just otherworldly. But on the same token, the injury issues are a concern. He actually said way back in the day that he's a player that would be interested in possibly retiring early. So Levine is the younger player. Mm -hmm. He is the player that possibly you could get some more uh some better years on the back end from him but i think that if the focus right now is winning a banner next season kyrie irving is the move and i think that his championship pedigree what he did with the Cavs when they came back down 3-1 zach levine still hasn't proven himself in the playoffs and that's big for me especially when you consider the spotlight of playing in los angeles but we're going to dive into this topic a lot more i'm sure especially as more rumors surface i still find it hard to believe that Kyrie Irving is going to link up with LeBron James until I see him liking some posts on Instagram or, you know, being followed out of some Brooklyn restaurant saying, yeah, I would love to be back with LeBron. Hey, I'll wait till I see it. I know that LeBron's tweeted some positive things about Kyrie Irving, but I, I just don't think, I mean, uh, did Kobe, did Shaq come back crawling back to Kobe? Did Kobe come crawling back to Shaq? Sometimes when it's over, it's over. So I just don't see it happening. But let me know down below in the comment section. Should the Lakers try to make a move for Kyrie Irving? How realistic do you think it is? And also, if you had to pick between the Lakers trading for Kyrie Irving or Zach Levine, who would you want to see in purple and gold? Let me know down below. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. And right here, as always, giving you the down low on the lake show is you low mr eric you low want to give him your handle at e-u-l-a-u -E twitter and instagram same handle keep it easy for everybody twitter and ig go give him a follow man you're not doing this lakers fandom thing right if you're not rocking with mr eric you low you low as always thanks my man and i'll talk to you soon